Welcome back everyone. We're going to continue our probability journey and today we're going to talk about how we can predict the future. Wahaha, probability. Let's kick us off with a little video situation here. The duck pond game is one of the oldest carnival games. Maybe the reason it's so popular is that everyone is a winner. You've been looking forward to your school carnival all year. You and your two best friends head straight for the duck pond. The ducks are numbered 1 through 31, and the number determines the prize. However, if you're lucky enough to pick the 32nd duck, the one with the star, you win the big prize. Of course, all three of you have your eyes on the big prize. Wouldn't it be neat if you could each take home a giant bear? How many games would you expect to play for all three of you to win? In this lesson, you'll learn how to make predictions like this using theoretical probability. Let's do this. Go ahead and pause the video, add a new entry to your table of contents. All right, like I said, we're going to make predictions, and just as we did with statistics, we're going to use a proportion. Go ahead and pause and write all this down. Okay, now that you've gotten it written down, step one is just to find the probability like we've been doing in all these lessons. Step two is to set up a proportion. We're going to put probability on one side and we're going to put our prediction on the other. We're going to use X to stand for whatever it is we don't know. Okay, here's an example. If I roll a number cube 20 times, how many times would I expect to roll a number greater than 4? I'm going to start by finding the probability. So all the numbers on a die greater than 4 would be 5 and 6. So that's 2 out of 6 numbers which simplifies to one-third. That's my proportion. And now I'm going to put my prediction on the other side. So how many out of 20 times would I expect? That means 20 is my total. It goes on the bottom. X goes on top. I loop it up, cross-multiply. I get 3x equals 20. Divide by 3. And I'm going to get x equals 6 and 2 thirds. 0.6 repeating. Or since it's kind of weird to say like, six and two-thirds times, I would say probably seven times. Rounding to the nearest time is a good way to go. All right, here's another one. If I roll a die 150 times, how many times can I predict getting a three or a four? Well, a three or a four, that's two sides out of six sides. So my probability of that happening is one-third. Now I set up my proportion. I put one-third, my probability on one side, and then I'm going to put my prediction on the other side. So I'm going to roll it 150 times total. So that goes on the bottom. And I want to know how many times out of the 150. So that's going to go on top. So again, loop it up. Solve for x. I'm going to get 3x equals 150. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. Um, x equals 50 times. I can predict that would happen. Go ahead and pause and copy this down. Okay. If we roll a die 80 times, how many times would we expect these things to happen? Well, let's start with rolling a 6. There is 1 6 out of 6 total sides, so our probability is 1 6. And then we're going to put on this side 80 total times, so that goes on the bottom, and the x goes on top like that. All right, loop it up, cross multiply, that would give us 6x equals 80. Divide by 6, divide by 6 to cancel that out. I'm going to get x equals um, 13.3 repeating, which would round to about 13 times. Again, around to the nearest time. All right, probability of getting a 1 or a 5. Well, that's two sides out of six sides total, and that simplifies to one third, so my probability is one third. Set up my proportion with the probability on one side, my prediction out of 80 on the other side, cross multiply like before. That's going to give me 3x equals 80, divide by 3, divide by 3. I'm going to get that um, x equals 26.6 repeating, and that would round to about 27 times there. Okay, probability of getting a 7. Are there any 7s on a die? Not last time I checked. So that gives us a probability of 0 out of 6 equals x over 80. And if you cross multiply, that gives us 6x equals 0. 0 divided by 6, guess what is 0? And that makes sense. 
doesn't matter how many times, I could roll that die a million times, I'm never going to get a 7. Okay, what about compound probability? If I flip two coins now 60 times, how many times would I predict getting double tails? Okay, well, let me calculate the probability first. Probability of getting one tail is one half. The probability of getting another tail is one half. And when I multiply them together, I get one fourth. So my probability of getting two tails is one fourth. So now I'm going to set up my proportion with one fourth, my probability on one side, and my prediction on the other side. So I want to know how many times out of 60. So I'm going to set it up like that. Cross multiply. I'm going to get 4x equals 60. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. X equals 15. So I'd predict that 15 times that's going to happen. Go ahead and pause and copy. All right, let's solve it. So if we flip, so I suppose this is a one four then. Oops, come on. If we flip two coins 40 times, how many times would we expect to get two heads? Well, let's start by calculating probability, which is step one. So probability of getting one head is half. Another head is also half, and I multiply that together, and I get one-fourth. I have a one-in-four chance of getting double heads. So now I set up my proportion. Probability on one side, my prediction on the other side. I want to know how many times out of 40, so I'm going to set it up like that. All right, well, I see myself an easy little relationship. Here. I know that I can go 4 times 10 and get 40. So whatever I do on the bottom, as long as I do it on the top, it'll stay even. So I can say x is 10. I would predict that 10 times I'm going to get a double head. Okay, grab your scratch paper. Try these two problems out. Hit pause. Oh, oh, look at all the fun we're going to have tomorrow. Okay, one last thing. So what if we do an experiment and we find ourselves an actual number? Um, we can still use the frequency that something actual, actually happened and we can use it to make ourselves a prediction. And remember that percent means per hundred. So I'm just simply going to take my percent and put it over 100 as an easy way to convert a percent to a fraction. Okay, Professor Berger found that the experimental probability of him uh, bullying a strike is 20%. So if he throws 400 times, how many times would he predict to get a strike? Well, I'm going to put my probability on one side but I'm going to write it as a fraction this time. And I'm going to put my prediction on the other side. I want to know how many out of 400. So again, I see I got myself an easy relationship here, timesing by 4 to get from one side to the other. 100 times 4 is 400, so 20 times 4 is 80. So he can predict he's going to get himself 80 strikes. Okay, I gave you this paper in class, so get it out. Pause it till you actually find it. Don't waste time copying this down. But we are going to change the numbers on here. We're going to make this example five an example six. We've been busy today. So the experimental probability that it'll rain on any given day in Houston, Texas is about 15%. Out of 365 days, that's a year, how many days can residents predict rain? Well, our probability is 15 over 100. That's my percent over here. My prediction is I want to know how many out of 365, like that. Okay, well, after I looped it up like that, I get that um, 100x equals 5,475. And when I divide by 100 on both sides, I don't like the way I did this. I tried to fix it, but it didn't work. Oh, well. Um, I'm just going to move the decimal twice. So I get myself an answer of 54.75, but I'm going to round to the nearest day. And so I look next door, that tells me to go up. So I'm going to predict 55 days. Okay. All right, last one. On a toy assembly line, 3% of the toys are found to be defective. That means they're broken. The quality control officer, that's the guy whose job it is to see uh, which toys are broken and which ones are working and get rid of the broken toys. He predicts that 872 toys will be found defective out of all of these toys that they make. Do we agree? Okay, so our probability is going to be 3 over 100. That's our 
And we're not going to use this number just yet because this is what he came up with and we're going to see if we agree with his prediction. But we do know that they made this many toys. So we're going to go X over 24,850. I'm not going to write it twice. We're just going to know that we're going to loop it up like that. Get 100X equals a big honking number, 74,550. And when I divide by 100, I move my decimal twice, and I'm going to get 74 point, sorry, 745.5, and I'm going to round to the nearest toy, so that's going to tell me to round up. So I'm going to say 700, oops, 746 toys. So do we agree with this prediction of that? So we're going to say no, because his prediction is to what? All right, well, if you said his prediction is too high, you're correct. His prediction is too high. We actually predict something lower. We predict that. Okay, go ahead and pause. Try these problems out on your scratch paper, and we'll talk tomorrow. Bye.